I'm not gonna go ahead and butcher his full name. You know him as Malreen. Malreen. He is the 19-year-old star mid laner of Team Falcons. He is an OG member of this mysterious creepwave roster, and he is absolutely everywhere. Just like Sumail and Miracle before him, this kid has been owning all of the best mid players in the entire world after literally joining his first tier 1 team five months ago. Aside from impeccable Hello Kitty tattoo taste, what exactly is this kid cooking that makes him so special? Oh, the only one! Here are five things Malreen excels at that place him in the top three mid laners of Dota 2 right now. Some people might start comparing Malreen with very high tier mid laners such as Prime Miracle or even Sumail. And honestly, for good reason. Malreen has been drastically outplaying a lot of his opponents in the last few tournaments. Like here in this clip against GPK, I'm sure most of you have seen by now. Where even after making a huge mistake of tanking a tower hit, he places a branch and secures first blood for himself, when realistically, he should have been the one dying first. Clutch decision making, with less than one second to react. We need to watch this play from GPK's perspective. And this is exactly his vision. The moment he runs up to try and get the last hit off, he gets branched by Malreen. Honestly, this play is devastating for GPK. His lane goes from, hell yeah, I'm gonna get a free first blood, to what the fuck just happened? Another thing Malreen excels at is truly understanding his hero to the max. He has so many level 30 heroes. Huskar, Timber, Lina, and the list goes on. On Monkey King, he's Platinum. You're Bronze 3, why are you picking this hero? So he's gonna go on Puck under the tower here in this clip. Do you notice something strange in what is going on in this play? Especially the Monkey King players? Is there something that stands out to you here? Look at his skill build. His skill build is 2031. He's currently holding a skill point of Tree Dance because when you take damage, it goes on cooldown. But he's not leveling it because the moment you skill it, it comes off cooldown. So right after the silence is over, because he just now skilled the spell, it actually allows him to Tree Dance and now Tower Dive Setsu, giving him a kill that I think maybe no other player in Dota would have gotten in this situation. He is very good at understanding how to get something out of a losing matchup. I don't think there's a worse matchup than playing a melee hero against Huskar. He decided to rush Boots of Speed and he knows that he just can't even contest this entire wave. So instead he's hiding basically behind the tower. This is the Huskar's tower by the way. Because the best thing and the only thing he can do is to try and pull this creep wave and take it with him between the towers. Because if he just lanes straight up here, it's just a no-go zone that won't give him anything. So instead, he's just gonna pull it all the way around, try to give himself some farm and deny some farm from Squad X at the same time. We know this type of play from like the offlane, right? Where you pull the wave like in between your towers and you just make it easy for yourself to not only get CS, the nice, but I also want to show you what happens with the lane positioning. So a little bit after this pull, they have a very nice lane control in this mid matchup. And even though it's Huskar against Earthshaker, because Squad X on the Huskar is so far pushed up, it now created this situation where Malreen can call for both of his supports to come over mid. And they're actually the one to kill the Huskar, which basically at this point, they just broke the entire game wide open. This is never supposed to happen to your Huskar. And this only comes from Malreen understanding his matchup and how he can make it work even even when he's supposed to lose. Another thing Malreen does is this dude is crazy efficient. He reminds me a little bit of Eternal Envy in a very good way. Furion, can you TP top? Furion, can you TP top? Furion, can you TP top? So at 145 into the game, he's already pushed out the wave before. He has his bottle coming, so he's ready for the water rune. He's mainly just waiting for this medium camp in order to stack it. The thing is that Bedboom have already pre-sentried the hard camp at minute two because they know exactly how Malreen abuses Badrider and other heroes. How does Malreen set these things up? He has two modes. He either pulls the wave into the tower to kill it more quickly, or he straight up pushes the wave like he does here with his Firefly and Seeky Napalm combo. The reason he does this is that so he can either A, go to the jungle faster, or B, block his next incoming wave, because the longer he delays this wave from meeting the enemy, the longer time he will have ultimately in the jungle without losing any gold or experience in the lane. So after pushing the wave, blocking his own wave, it gets closer to the minute mark again where he triple stacks his medium camp. He tries to deward the hard camp, but he sadly doesn't make it before the three minute mark. Look at, look at this camp. At minute five of this game, he's already triple stacked his own medium camp in his jungle. This is not something that you see many players do. But this just goes to show that this guy, when he plays his heroes, he's super incredibly efficient. The thing is also that he doesn't really stop there. 
At minute 515, he oftentimes finds angles like this where he pulls the wave. Instead of it having meet his own creep wave, he now takes it with him into the jungle. He's not only farming the creep wave, he's also farming the jungle camps. He keeps stacking his own camps. Because when we look at the net worth now, this is a bad rider Lina matchup. They are not supposed to be even. He's ahead in net worth right now and they are literally the same level when it comes to experience. I would say the last thing we need to mention when talking about Marine's abilities is that this guy really drives his opponents crazy in the laning stage. He aggressively denies every single creep and will non-stop harass whoever is against him. In this game, Maureen is level 7. He's nearly level 8 while his counterpart XM is level 4. He solo killed him 3 times and took his tower within the first 7 minutes. Let me show you how he does that. So after watching a lot of replays, one thing that I learned is that this guy clicks his enemy so much. Like, look at the start of the lane. Boom. Already the first hit right away on XM. He looks for more. There's the second hit. For the love of God! Please! That's five hits within, like, 15 seconds. Really early on in the lane, like, forcing early pressure. Now it's, like, up to, it's up to, like, 11 hits. XM is already, like, eating, like, his second tango of the lane. And it's like, it's already this early pressure and making sure that you get the bottle before the enemy mid laner does. Even though he's about to be pressured in his tower, he just right clicks XM like two to three times. Like in between every CS, he keeps hitting XM whenever he can. Stun, three more hits. And this part is very crucial. XM doesn't have his bottle yet. It's, it's still coming out to him. Whereas Maureen already has it. He instantly takes the moment again to hit XM whenever he has the opportunity. And here he just goes really aggro because right now he knows I can run up this cliff, but he uses his bottle charge. He has a fairy fire available. He has tangles, full stacks. Boom, baby. First blood, two minutes into the game. Double his CS, five denies compared to one. Just super clean and super easy. This guy would run a marathon if it meant he could get a single more deny in his laning stage. I want to show you guys a few of the small things he does, like the lengths he goes to get himself a deny in the laning stage. He aggros the creep wave by clicking the TB in the top lane. Now he's making all of these melee creeps hit this range creep right? So the focus is now the range creep. He knows that when this creep drops to low HP, CPK will be looking to orbit. So what Mulrine does here already, notice how all the creeps start hitting him instead. He is making sure that if GPK orbs, the creep will stay high enough and he cannot get the last hit. The moment he now sees that, okay, I can hit this creep two times before GPK can hit the creep with the orb, he instantly takes this opportunity, giving himself a deny this is how far this guy goes in order to get a deny. Super impressive stuff. I cannot wait to see how this kid's career will evolve this season. Speaking of, if you want to come see Malreen, Team Falcons, and all the best teams in the world play live in front of one of the most amazing crowds that we have in Dota, you're in luck. There's still a few ESO1 Birmingham tickets available right now. So go get yours fast with the link in the description. Hopefully, I'll see you all there. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you all for watching.